it's very easy to bring a loop into live. If it's of an exact bar length or two, three, four, you can just drop it in and usually it's gonna slot and start working straight away. So this one here is synced. I've got a programmed beat that is sitting on top. Yeah, and this is like from a library that a lot of people have used. It's a very recognizable loop. So what we would wanna do is to twist it up and make it slightly less recognizable. So I'm gonna bring this back over here. Let's take this, shorten it, which is a lot better, okay? But what we wanna do is just to try to think about other ways that we can twist it up. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop in an audio effect called the auto filter. Gonna bring the cutoff down. And that sounds great as it is, but we're gonna use the envelope. So this is basically listening to the signal coming through and moving that filter in a rhythmic fashion. As we increase this, it makes the sound brighter. If we take it lower, it's more dull. So it's based around the position of the filter here. The other thing I'm gonna do is take the attack faster. So it's really interesting resonant sweep that's occurring in time with the beat. You can take that higher. And that sounded good. Let me hear that with the beat. Take the cutoff lower. There we go. So we now got ourselves a really interesting futuristic percussive vibe. Another thing that we could do to twist that up further would be to take the ping pong delay. I'm gonna use it on a return this time and I'm gonna take the send. So it's coming back over here, have a listen. So we can use the volume here to adjust the signal coming back. Let's take the dry weight mix to 100%. Back onto the filter, we could also modulate the filter cutoff with an LFO. You can hear how it's moving slightly now. I'm going to slow the speed down. So it's evolving over time. I can synchronize the sweep with tempo. Eight bars. Let's increase the amount. So you can feel it rising and falling. It's also panning differently because of the phase at 180 degrees. If you don't want the pan position to move, just take it to zero. We have of course got panning occurring with the delay. So we've got some really interesting movement occurring there. But you could also make it even more obscured. I've got my grid on 16s here. And if I take the loop brace to three of those 16s, we're gonna get a very interesting triplet pattern occurring. I'll show you what it sounds like on its own. And now in the mix. It's gonna increase the resonance. Gonna bring up the delay return. you've got a fantastic range of possibilities there. So you can use that same kind of technique with all kinds of percussion loops. It's gonna be a lot easier, in fact, with loops that don't have claps and hats like the one that I have. And uh, you know, you're gonna get lots of possibilities. You always try to go for maybe threes, sevens, fives, instead of you know the twos, the fours, the eights in terms of the grids. And you can get an evolving movement that's gonna actually bring the track to life, give it more organic flavor.